It's, 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 it's indescribably beautiful. It reminds me of the 4th of July. Turn off all the lights. I want to see what it looks like in the street. Hello. Welcome. Merry Christmas. I'm going to attempt to paint a rather complex portrait of the family from the movie A Christmas Story. Multi-person portraits are, by nature, significantly more difficult. And this one presented some unique challenges with expressive faces and less than optimal lighting. In the process, let's also try to figure out what makes this movie so special. In case you haven't seen it, A Christmas Story is a comedy film from 1983 based on a book by Gene Shepard called In God We Trust, All Others Pay Cash. It takes place over se several weeks around Christmas and around a nine-year-old named Ralphie and his family. The plot is incredibly basic. Ralphie wants a BB gun for Christmas. Will you get one or not? What would you like for Christmas? Horrified. I heard myself blurt it out. I want an official Red Rider Carbon Action 2 and Joe Wayne's Ball Arrive. So why is this movie so loved? I think it's because of its quirky humor, memorable characters, timeless themes, and perhaps because TBS plays it on repeat every year on Christmas. Ah, fragile! It must be Italian! Well, I think that says fragile. Primarily, however, oh, yeah. I think this movie is just powerfully nostalgic. Strangely, though, the, the, the screenplay author, Gene Shepard, intended the movie to be anti-nostalgic. The crux of his jokes were to make fun of traditionally nostalgic activities. He could not, years later, understand why people described A Christmas Story as nostalgic. And I think Gene just did not understand that nostalgia is rooted in relatable experiences, and relatable experiences are often flawed. While Gene was making fun of mall Santas as something silly and frivolous and flawed the fact that they are universally flawed everywhere <laughs> means that so many in north america can relate to this you know this mall santa experience you know the long lines grumpy santa strange artificial laughter it's all relatable and real ho 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 and then there's ralphie's struggles with daily life with bullies daydreams homework Gene also nails the ups and downs of commercialism, you know, from the absurd to the, the great, from Ralphie's hard-earned decoder ring that itself is just trying to sell more chocolate milk. Be sure to drink your Ovaltine. Ovaltine? A crummy commercial? To the one Christmas pre present that he wants so much. No, no, I want an official red under carbon. I should do one if you want my lay rifle. Let's talk about why multi-person portraits are difficult. It's tough to get all the proportions correct uh, to achieve multiple likenesses in one painting, as well as unity across the entire painting. The proportions for features must be right in relative to all the other faces. In a single person portrait, you can adjust the size of the head, for example, in case you drew the facial features too large or too small. You can cut into the side if the head is too wide, uh, or onto the top or the bottom if it's too tall. So in order to keep, try to keep everything in the right proportion, I'm going to be doing a few things. First of all, as you can see, I'm sketching in all the heads first so that the heads will be the right size compared to one another. Secondly, I will develop the entire painting together, not going into details in any area too soon. This helps to create unity in the painting. Colors are more harmonious as they are coming from the same mixture. It also makes it easier to scrub out and paint over an area and move it if I need to, and you'll see me do that a few times. Finally, there's the problem that getting in even a single likeness can be difficult. I will just have to do it four times. I think I didn't quite get the old man's likeness, but uh, three out of four is pretty good, right? I did decide to compress the scene horizontally. In the actual movie, the lamp is farther away and there's a lot of dead space between the family and the lamp, so I just basically just moved the lamp over. I later on realized that then that means the lamp shape would be obscuring the mother's face a little bit too much, so I moved it just a little bit to the right again. 
I'm using raw umber for the drawing and for the underpainting. And I'm using proportional sizing for as my drawing technique. Uh, basically, for example, measure from the, the chin to the eyes of one face and compare that to the size of another face or, for example, the width of a face. Again, the goal is just to make sure that proportionally everything is correct and in the right place. So this right here is an example where I get the position of the facial features uh, incorrect. So I paint over them, kind of scrub them out, paint over them, uh, and move them all down a little bit. Uh, also at this stage, you'll notice I'm more pretty much just painting eye sockets and not eyes and kind of just like nose shadows, but nothing else. Uh, this stage looks a little bit funny. My wife uh, came downstairs and thought I was painting a zombie family, which I guess, you know, <laughs> Can look, can look a little bit scary at this point. But uh, again, I'm, tr I'm trying to make the, to develop the painting all together uh, to give it unity. And in doing that means not going into details too soon. Also, I should say that I'm using oil paint here. I'm not using and profanity. My father worked in profanity the way other artists might work in oils or clay. It was his true medium, a master. As the years go by, my own understanding of this film changes as I change. I no longer think that this movie is about a BB gun. I think it's about a simple, everyday love of a family. A love that is not dramatic or demanding. A love that is virtuous because it is unaware of its virtue. Love of family. I'll give you some examples though. When Ralphie says the F word early on in the movie, his mother puts soap in his mouth as punishment. Uh, later, though, when Ralphie is caught beating the snot out of the town bully and swearing up a storm, his mother covers for him so that he won't get in trouble with his father. Steady torrent of obscenities and swearing of all kinds was pouring out of me as I screamed. This isn't some huge act. It's just simple kindness that comes from a deep understanding of Ralphie's experience. Here's another example. The old man is portrayed as a working man who struggles to provide for his family. He attempts to fix the furnace himself, presumably to save money. In the entire movie, Ralphie never tells his dad that he wants a Red Rider BB gun. One gets the sense that the old man just doesn't have the same connection with his children as his wife does. And yet... Hey, that's funny. What's that over there behind the desk? Where? 